Hi everybody, this video I'm going to demonstrate how to create uh, a respawn action in a 2D game in Unity. So in previous videos we have uh, platforms, we have some pickups, I have a character that can move around, uh, I have some environment pieces. Uh, so now I want to create a different kind of interaction where the player, uh, if he collides with a enemy, uh, it will respawn the character or if it jumps off the side of the map um, and it flies over here, falls down into a pit, then uh, the character can respawn to a specific location. So let me uh, let me just duplicate uh, one of my platforms and I'll use this as like my respawn area. So we'll kind of respawn maybe up here <coughs> and we will uh, use that for any time we need to respawn. You can create as many respawns as you want but that'll be our starting point here. So let's create uh, an empty game or a new game object and it'll be a sprite and we'll just do a red circle um, for an enemy. So we'll say spike enemy. I wanted to call that whatever I wanted to call this. So I can create. Uh, let's just call them enemy one, enemy two, enemy one. And let's uh, zero the or reset this, and we will change the color to like a bright red. Okay. And we're gonna change the sorting layer. Let's just do a pickup so we make sure it's visible. You can create uh, a new sorting layer uh, for enemies as well. We're going to create a tag and we'll call this an enemy tag in a minute. Let's add a box collider. Not a box collider. Let's do a circle collider. Circle collider. There you go. And we're going to make sure we turn on is trigger. All right. So there's our enemy one. Um, let's see. Let's take that and we can duplicate that. And we'll do enemy two. So we can have a couple of variations maybe. Maybe enemy two is a darker red. There you go, something like that. <clears throat> so we can create uh, prefabs out of these if we want to. All right, so we're going to add a new tag. Uh, so we'll come in here to our add tag, and we're going to new one, and we'll say enemy one. Okay, so let's go back to our enemy one object and add our enemy one tag. So that way in our script we can uh, allow it to collide and interact with this. So um, let's go ahead and make prefab out of this. So we'll say enemy one, we'll drag that down, create prefab, and we'll take our enemy two, and we'll drag that down as well. There you go. So we got two enemies that we can collide differently with. Let's put one right here, and we'll put one over there. Second enemy can be way over here. All right. So what will happen is when the player collides with enemy one, we want to respawn. It'll take all the health away, respawn back to our respawn point. All right, so to do this, we're going to use a script and then a location. So we need a new respawn position. So we'll go to create empty object. We'll call this one respawn point. Respawn point. Okay. We don't particularly need to reset this because this is going to be a specific location in in our scene. So I'm going to move it way over here, and I'm going to create an icon for this. So we'll just create, uh, let's say, a red icon, so we can know that this is respawn. There you go. It says respawn, and uh, this is going to be used for the position of where to pop the character, try to teleport the character back to this respawn point after they get hit by our enemy. Alright, so there's our respawn point above our platform. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our scripts folder and we're going to create a new script. So I'm going to right click, create new C-sharp script. You want to call this one player respawn. Player respawn. Here you go. All right, let's open that up. We're going to use uh, Visual Studio Code for this. And we could add this to our player movement script, uh, but uh, it's kind of nice to have a separate script for more subset specific things here. So, um, so that way we're not loading up our player movement script even longer with more content. So we're just going to add a player respawn script and add our information here. 
And this script is just going to be for when the player um, <clears throat> collides with an object. So we actually don't need void start or void update. So we're not going to need either of those. We can leave them in there, but we can also just delete them out. Uh, so we're going to use void on trigger. Enter to D. Okay. So we're going to say when the player collides with our enemy object, then respawn our player. Uh, so on, on void or void on trigger, enter 2D, open and close our parentheses, and we're going to do collider 2D. <coughs> all right, uh oh, let's see, let's remove all of this extra stuff it tried to create. All right, so uh, we need to see or have a question here. So if other dot game object compare tag. So if open parentheses other dot game object dot compare tag. We're going to open up another set of parentheses and do a quotations, and we're going to look for that uh, tag we just created. So enemy one close quotation close parentheses close parentheses, then do something. And what we want this to do is transform um, or move the player to another location. So we're going to do transform dot position of the player equals um, our respawn point, where we need a variable for our respawn point. So let's go up here to before, before avoid, and we're going to add public game object. And we're going to tie this into respawn point. Semicolon to end that. So we're going to get a reference of our respawn point, and then we're going to say move the player to the position of the respawn point. So respawn point dot transform dot position position. Semicolon. <clears throat> All right. So that should be it. So we're going to uh, control S to save. So we need our respawn point location, which we'll add in a minute. And then we say on trigger inner collider of the enemy one object move the player's position to the respawn points position. All right, so let's go back into Unity. See if we have any errors. We don't. All right, we're good. And we're going to find our player. Where's our player at? Player. Where's our player. There's our player. There it is, player anim. And we're going to add that player respawn script to the player. Okay, here's our player respawn script. We're looking for a respawn point. So let's drag our respawn point object into the respawn point variable of our script. I missed. Let's try again. There we go. All right, so there's that. So whenever the player collides with this character with the tag enemy1, then it's going to respawn to that point. So that's kind of like an instant death kind of thing. Let's go try it out. Hit play. All right, here's our player. We can walk around. When I collide with this enemy, it should respawn me. There you go. So that respawns me back over there. I can move back and show it again. When I touch the collider with that, it respawns me up to this respawn point. So that's a pretty easy way to do kind of an instant death respawn back to the beginning of the level or wherever you might want to respawn the character back towards it. So what if the player comes over here and falls off the edge of the cliff um, uh, or gets to an area where you don't want them to go? Well, we can have another opportunity where we are going to tr create what's called like a kill volume. <clears throat> uh, and uh, let's go back to our ground tile set. In a previous video, I talked about how to build, um, let's do the props tile set actually, uh, build some environment 2D tile sheets. And what I have here is a uh, kind of stakes pattern here. So I'm going to add this. Maybe we'll start there and kind of move it out some to add that there. And this is going to be a spikes where I don't want the player to kind of get to. Let's see where it is over here. Yep, that one. Okay. So I don't want the player to get to there. Um, and then they'll fall and die off before they can reach way over here. 
So I'm just going to drag out uh, with some different tiles, and we'll come in here and add like a brown area in here as well. Let's just do that. Uh, to kind of blend this out some more. It's not going to look perfect for now, but it'll be a good starting point. There we go. There we go. So the, if the player falls off the edge, we can kill off the player. Um, so we're going to create a kill volume with that. So those are just visuals to suggest why the player is falling off and hurting themselves. So let's uh, let's create an empty game object, and we're going to call this kill volume. <coughs> kill volume. Um, let's reset this just to reset it back to the defaults, and then. I'm going to add an icon, there you go, that says kill volume there, gray maybe, and let's do a box collider. So we're going to box collider so that way we have a collision, let's scale this out, let's see this doesn't need to be that tall, maybe 0.5, but this doesn't need to be really wide, so however wide I want my entire level to have this kind of kill volume, make it even wider than what our place is. Then I'm going to come down here and kind of move it so when the player collides with this box, it's going to kill off the player. So basically the character can't fall off in the middle of nowhere. Okay, I'm going to put it just a little bit lower than the spikes so it gives some indication that the player is touching the spikes and then hurting themselves. Okay, let's, uh, let's create a new tag for this kill volume. So we're going to create a tag. Get the plus symbol right there and then we're going to go uh, kill volume. Kill volume. Okay, and we'll go back to our kill volume object and add that kill volume tag to it. So we can also use the same enemy one, but we'll do a different one in case we want to do some other actions with enemy one tag as well. Well, let's make sure we save our scene so we don't lose anything. And then let's go back into our player respawn script. Alright, actually, let's go back to Unity for one second. We need to take that kill volume and make sure the box collider is set to trigger. Is trigger. So I can collide with it, but do something. So it is trigger. And then in our respawn script, I already have everything hooked up, except for we're going to add another if statement underneath our uh, on trigger enter. We're just going to check to see if it's triggering or if it's colliding with a different object. So if I do other open parentheses or if open parentheses other dot game object dot compare tag again space open parentheses open quotation and we'll use our new kill volume close quotation close parentheses close parentheses we're going to do open and close curly brackets and we'll do the same thing so we can actually copy this line over transform position equals respawn point transform position semicolon all right so we want to respawn to the same point so we're just going to copy that but we're looking for the kill volume uh, tag instead of enemy let's save go back into unity game object game object what's going on here up oh, uh, let's see up oh, compared tag compare tag no D for compare. Control S to save. That should fix that. There we go. All right. So now if I play, if I collide with the uh, enemy, then I'm going to respawn. But if I, also if I come over here, jump off the side, and collide with that, then uh, I will respawn back up here as well. So both sides of my jump over this this time. There we go. Both sides, I should be able to jump off. Oh look, I gotta move my, my collision. I got a collision there. But it works now, so I think I have another like extra collision here somewhere that I need to go find. But that's how we can set up respawn points when an enemy collides with us uh, or a kill volume down at the bottom or any area that I don't want the player to access and kind of die or have to respawn, then it can respawn back to our respawn point location. All right, that'll wrap up this video on respawn and kill volumes.